In part one, we looked at how to integrate with sines and cosines. As we all know, those aren't the only trig functions out there. In this part two, we'll go ahead and look at how to handle secants and tangents. Then, of course, you can extend those to cosecants and cotangents. We'll handle the basic case here. Let's just jump right back into it. So we have an innocent looking integrand here, just integrating tangent squared x. And you might be tempted to just write this in terms of sines and cosines, right? Remember that tangent is sine over cosine. But there's actually a slightly easier way, right? If we recall our basic uh, Pythagorean identities, we have this one here where we have 1 plus tangent squared x is equal to secant squared x. Okay, I can shuffle some things around, right? So we get tangent squared equals secant squared minus 1. But how does that help us? You might be asking yourself. Well, recall also, okay, this is one thing that we should recall. But the other thing we need to recall is that the derivative with respect to x of tangent of x is equal to secant squared of x. And as we all know, integration and differentiation are just inverse processes of each other. So knowing the derivative of tangent gives me the antiderivative of secant. And so we're just going to go ahead and replace here. So just like before, we follow our highlights, okay? Except now I'm replacing tangent squared. That's a terrible integral sign. Replacing tangent squared with secant squared x minus 1 dx. And now this is easy, right? We're going to use that thing right there. We're going to use the fact that the derivative of tangent is secant squared. So integrating secant squared gives me, well, tangent. And then, of course, secant squared minus 1, okay? Antiderivative of 1 is just x. And hey, plus a constant, we're done. Nothing big, right? Nothing big. Now, there are se several other ways you can attack this integral, but this is probably the more straightforward one, right? Tangent squared is just secant squared minus 1. We make the trade, and now it's in terms of things that we know. Pretty neat, huh? Okay. Well, let's go ahead and move on to our next one here. This one kind of looks like some that we've seen before. Tangent to the 6x, secant to the 4th x dx. And we got to remember a few other things, right? Okay, we know that the derivative of tangent is secant squared. We know that secant squared minus 1, as we saw above, is tangent squared. But how does this help us? Well, remember for with sines and cosines, as we saw in part 1, you want to peel away one at a time. This time, you want to peel two. Okay. Now, both tangent and secant have even powers here. Okay. With sines and cosines, you want to peel from an odd power. But for secants and tangents, you want to peel from even powers. Okay. You want to do this in pairs. Well, there are many other ways to do this, but let's go ahead and take this approach here. Again, we'll recall that 1 plus tangent squared of x is equal to secant squared x. Okay. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and take the secant to the fourth here, okay? And I'm going to write it as secant squared squared. Let's go ahead and actually write, write ourselves a little note here, okay? Note that, in fact, if I take anything to the fourth power, that's the same thing as taking the second power of that thing and squaring it, okay? So u to the fourth is equal to the square of u squared. So what we'll do is just do a little rewrite here. So I'm still going to keep my six tangents here. Secant to the fourth will become secant squared times secant squared x. Okay. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to replace the secant squared, okay, just like we did above, okay, or something similar to what we did in the above, okay. I'm going to use this here to rewrite this one. I'm going to take one of those secant squares and write it as 1 plus tangent squared. You'll see why. So I still have those six tangents out front. That secant squared will become 1 plus tangent squared. And then I still have secant squared left over on the right, dx. Now, why is this helpful? Well, think about the thing that we wrote up above, right? That's the derivative of tangent to secant squared. 
Well, I have some tangents there, and I got a secant squared there, so that suggests a U substitution. Okay, Let's do this in this color here. We're going to let U equal tangent X. So DU is equal to secant squared X DX, and, well, this just works out beautifully, right? Once again, follow the highlight. Okay, U is tangent X. And then DU, let's do that in magenta. DU is there, secant square x dx, okay? So now let's follow our path. Okay, those six tangents out the front become u to the sixth. On the inside is 1 plus u squared. Then secant square x dx, well, that's just DU, right? And now look what you got here. Just like the other cases that we did with the sines and cosines, it's just the power rule. Let's multiply out, right? u to the 6 plus u to the 8. And of course, we just used the power rule, so write it like this 1 over 7 u to the 7th plus 1 over 9 u to the 9th. That's just a power rule, right? Add 1 to the exponent, divide by the new exponents, and don't forget plus a constant. And now we just go ahead and put everything back, right? u was a tangent, okay? So we write this as tangent 7th x. Then ninth of a tangent to the ninth x plus a constant and folks, that's how you handle that. Not too bad, right? Okay, again, the idea was I wanted to trade two secants for a one plus tangent square that allows me to go ahead and set up for a u substitution. Okay, we are finding a way to look a few moves ahead. Okay. Try to read into that position, okay? Try to calculate out what you would probably need to do next. Remember, with u substitution, you want a function and its derivative appearing somewhere in the integrand. Okay, very nice, right? Now, this one does look a little scarier, okay? Let's look at it. x times tangent to the fifth x squared, secant cubed x squared dx. There is a lot going on here, right? And... You know, you might see the x in front and think, well, maybe I can use integration by parts, okay, but that doesn't really help you out here. See, what's a clue, again, to tip you off about a u substitution is you want to look for a function, okay, look for a function and its derivative. Look for a function and its derivative, okay? So here's what we're going to do. Okay, we're going to let y equal x squared, so dy is equal to 2. Again, use your favorite letter. Okay, doesn't really matter. And so now take a look at what this integrand simplifies to. Okay, also take notes that we'll have 1 half dy is equal to x dx, just by shuffling a factor of 2 over. And now check it out, right? Check this out. We'll have 1 half. Okay, tangent to the fifth y, secant cubed y, dy. Now it looks like an integral that we can handle, okay? We just reduce this by using a u substitution, okay? A priming substitution, okay? Well, note here that both the powers of tangent and secant are odd. And so, if they're both odd, I want to peel away one from each. Because we're going to be using this fact here. Okay, just like we have to remember the derivative of tangent, we also need to remember the derivative of secant. Okay, found in your favorite calculus one reference, or just use the quotient rule, because you can write that as one over cosine, right? All right. And the derivative of secant is, well, secant of x times tangent of x. Okay. Now, of course, remember the fun fact here that if you took the derivative of cosecant instead, it's cosecant cotangent, but that's all multiplied by a minus 1. Okay, cofunctions have derivatives that look similar to your regular cousins, but with a minus sign. Okay, so the derivative of secant is secant times tangent. Why does that help us? Because take a look at what happens. Okay, when I do the peeling here, that's an awful integral sign. When I do the peeling here, I'll uh, do this here. I'll peel away one tangent, one secant, and then I'll have secant y, tangent y, dy. And 
take a look at what appears, right? Secant Y, Tangent Y appears. But I'm not quite set up for my U substitution because I need the rest of the integrand to be all in secant. Well, why don't we just use the identity that we used before, right? Okay. We know, let's go back here, okay. We know that 1 plus tangent squared is secant squared. Okay. So we're going to employ a similar trick here, okay, like we did in a one of those other problems. I'm going to write that tangent to the fourth as tangent squared squared. Okay. So we have tangent squared of y squared times secant squared y and secant y tangent y dy. And now we're going to use the fact again that tangent squared is secant squared y minus one. Beautiful. Now you see where it's all coming from, right? Let's take a look here. So we have one half this integral. I am not doing very good with my integral signs tonight. Oh boy. All right. Tangent squared y, that's just going to be secant squared y minus one. We're going to square that. Okay. Now we have secant squared y, secant y, tangent y, dy. You can probably see the substitution now, right? Uh, let's use orange, say. Okay, Roadrunner orange. U equals secant y. Du is equal to secant y, tangent y, y, right? You see where that's coming from, right? Secant y, tangent y, dy, okay? And the rest is just going to be some u's, right? All right, we're going to get a lot here, okay? I hope I have enough room. Okay, nope, don't want that. So, we have one half the integral of u squared minus 1 squared times u squared, and the rest is du. That's another power rule thing, right? Go ahead and expand the square as usual, okay? Let's write a little note here to ourselves, okay? A minus B squared. We need to remember this one, okay? A squared minus 2AB plus B squared. No calculus required here. That's just an algebra thing, right? Okay. A lot of this, okay, was manipulating it with the algebra, doing a bit of calculus to massage the integrand, and we're going to continue massaging this until we get something that we can work with. Now take a look at what's happening here, right? Okay, half the integral of, all right, U to the fourth. Minus 2u squared plus 1 times u squared. Now we multiply through, do some more algebra steps, right? Half the integral of, let's see, u to the sixth minus 2u to the fourth, and then plus u squared. And folks, it's still, again, the power rule, okay? That's going to be the punchline for a lot of this. All right, u to the seventh over 7, okay? Two fifths, u to the fifth plus one-third u cubed, plus a constant. And now I'm just going to go ahead and multiply through, replace back with u. Actually, let's be a little more clever, right? u was something in terms of y, and y was something in terms of x. Ah, so we could have killed this immediately by saying u equals secant of x squared, okay? From this chain here, okay, take a look here. All right, we have y equals x squared u equals secant of y. Remember that when we compose, that means u is actually equal to secant of x squared. We can go ahead and just replace that. Now, you can unnest this one step at a time if you need to see that, okay? But take a look at what we got here. Multiplying through, half of 1 over 7 is 1 over 14. u to the 7th is secant to the 7th power of x squared, I'm going to put the parentheses there to make it a little friendlier. Minus a half times two fifths, that's a fifth. Secant to the fifth power of x squared. Then plus half times a third is a sixth. And then we have secant cubed of x squared plus a constant. A beautiful result. A beautiful result.
what does it all come down to? The power rule, okay? So the punchline here, okay? Here, I should have wrote it down here. Because we have odd powers, I have an odd number of sequence and tangents, heal one of each. Because then, I'm going to use that fact there, that the derivative of a secant is secant times tangent. And you want to have an extra secant lying around there when you make the substitution. Okay, punchline here. When you have an odd number of secants and tangents together, you're going to peel away one of each. But if you have an even number of either one, you need to peel away, say, two. What do we do here? We need to peel away two secants. You could have also peeled away two tangents if you wanted to, but it would be a little harder. Okay. But there's your punchline, okay? Everything follows from these patterns. I encourage you to practice, practice, practice. Now, we got two more problems here, okay, in this set. They will require us to go back and look at some of the uh, applications that we saw before with geometry. Okay, and we'll go ahead and see how to solve those problems in part. See you in the next one.